Welcome to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. But even though it's Palm Sunday, we're still in our series. Hallelujah. Take a little bit of sensitivity out. But we're, 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 we're still in our, our uh, series. We're talking about the born again life. There's a life full of transformation, not inspiration. There, there, there's a time when you can get inspired, you know, get some inspiration, inspired. Yeah, it's going to come out. Oh, I'm going to create a new word, one or the other. I'm, it's going to either come out right or I'm going to create a new word, and we're going to have to get that in the dictionary. But I mean, you know, but we want transformation. We want to live this life, hallelujah, so that when we, when, wherever we go, people know, oh, yeah, that's, that's a child of God right there. Hallelujah. You know, you know, even when you get around your friends and your, your, your family and the people who knew you when, they'd be like, whoo, I remember when you used to do this, and I remember when you used to do that. You'd be like, oh, but I've been transformed. I, I'm not who I used to be. Hallelujah. I'm who God is creating me. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm a new creation. That's what we got to understand, you know. And, and, and when it's new, it's new. Now, nobody want to open up no gift on Christmas and find something that somebody always been playing with for 10, 10 years. It's all beat up. No, 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 no. You're looking for the new. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so as we as we get ready to get into this, 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 this Palm Sunday message, though, we got to remind you of the scriptures that we've been dealing with all year long. These are our theme scriptures. Hallelujah. I, I do it this way because at the end of the year, these particular scriptures are just like embedded in your mind. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 12 and 3. The Bible says, because we because of the privilege and authority, God has given me a warning. I'm sorry, that should be two. Go back to two. Hallelujah. Well, I like that one too. That's a, you, you are better than you really are. I like that. Don't think, don't say, don't think you are better than you really are. Let me put that don't in there. Be honest with yourself. But in Romans 12 and 2, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And, and, and I don't know about you. I want to know God's will for me. I, 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 I want to continue to live in God's will for me because I, I, I'm pretty sure that God has revealed to me what it is that he wants me to do. And, and you know what? It, it's, it's one of those things when you are feeling the urge of God to do something that you're like, I don't know how to do that. And, and God is saying, but, but look, let me just show you. And, and you begin to get, you know, thoughts and ideas, and you're like, I don't even know where that came from. I don't know where that came from. You know, I, you know, I, I didn't learn that. I didn't, and, you, and, and, and you have to recognize that's, that's God telling you, this is where I want you to be. If, if you, if, if the will, the will that God has for you, right, is, is, is not something that you're going to be comfortable. It's not something that you're going to know how to do. See, because if, if, if it was something that, that you already knew how to do and comfortable in, what you need God for? God said, I need to, I need to, I need you to go higher. I, I, he, God said, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's that power that's working on the inside of you that is, a, 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 you know, that's enabling you to do what you didn't think you knew how to do. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. The, you know, you know, a relationship with Jesus Christ, you know. You know, I I don't even hang around people like this anymore. But you know, y'all know these people be talking about all the the man and the white man, and this one always got to keep me down, and they don't want me to do. Look, look, you know, Jesus Christ, get me across all of that. You know, Jesus Christ, you know, what 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 God in my life? I don't have to worry about what the world wants to put on me. All I got to do is make myself available for what God has for me. Oh, hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You better believe it. 
You better believe that. Let's see. And our, and our second scripture is uh, uh, the most important commandment is this. And that's something that we got. You, 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 you should know if you you read the Bible, you should know what the most important commandment is, because if you're not doing anything else, you should be doing these. The most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord, our God is the one and only Lord. OK, so a promise is coming, um, you know, and, and, and these commandments and people say, oh, it says, oh, Israel. Well, here's what the Bible does say. For those of you who say, well, this is talking to Israel. This is not talking to me. The Bible says if you be in Christ. Then you are Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. And so whatever God promised Israel, uh, because I'm in Christ, I can say me too. I, I just want you to understand that because it's a Bible reference to let me say whatever's promised to them, me too. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You better get that because them promises is yours. Bible says in Mark 12 and 30, it says, and you must love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And then it says, and the second is equally as important. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. That's important. Because we love God with all our heart, mind and so because we love our neighbors as ourselves, when we do that, we're being obedient to the to the most important commandment in the Bible. Right. And when we doing when we're doing that, even though it's hard, what we do is we, we put ourselves in line to be blessed. Understand this. Blessings will always follow obedience. If you're looking to be blessed, but you're not obedient to the word, you might as well stop looking for being blessed. What you in, what you in line for is uh, grace and mercy. And I, I don't know about y'all, but I ain't trying to live off of grace and mercy because in case you didn't know, grace and mercy is not guaranteed. The Bible does say uh, his mercies are new, but it ain't necessarily going to be new for you. Mercy going somewhere is new every morning, but it may not be going. You might be back in the line. You might not be, you know, you may be back in the line, but, but I know my blessing, my, my, my obedience to the word put me in the front, you know, and, 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 and it ain't like, you know, I'm, I'm special. The front line could just be all the way across, you know, you in the front, you in the front, you in the front, you in the front, you all y'all in the front. Cause you, oh, y'all, y'all, you know, cause you've been obedient to the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Being obedient to the word puts you in, put you in the front, put you in the front. And so what we've been doing, we've been doing in, uh, from 2 Peter 1 and 5, because if you read 2 Peter, if you read that chapter, you'll, you'll, and we, we've gone over it. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, you know, because I'm just doing a little review. But the thing is, is that we have to begin to grow. And when we become Christians, you know, my, my pastor would say, you're as saved as you're ever going to be, right? When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're as saved as you're ever going to be. Which is, what are you saved from? You're, you're, you're saved from the sin that was sending you to hell. Okay, well, Jesus did that on the cross. We'll be dealing with that next, next week on Easter, right? But, 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 but understand something. There's, there's nothing else that you can do about sin because you're as saved as you're ever going to be. Now you're, 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 you're in this transformation process. You're in the sanctification process. You're, 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 you're learning how to please God. You're learning how to live right. You're not trying not to sin. You're trying to live for God. Sin's been dealt with. Sin has no power. Sin, sin is not your master anymore. It used to be your master. It used to tell you where to go, what to do, who to be with. It used to take you here and take you there. It used to keep you longer than you even wanted to be. But now you tell sin, go on about yourself. Sin, 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 sin doesn't have control over you. Hallelujah. It, it, it can only do what you allow it to do. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so in, in, in this second Peter, um, uh, one and five, the word, word of God says, in view of this, make every effort to respond 
to God's promises. See that, yeah, now you got to understand what the promises of God are. When you know what promises you hold it on to. When you're sick and you want healing. Hallelujah. When you feel bound up and you want freedom. You know, hallelujah. When you, when you want some deliverance out of something. Hallelujah. When you want to be, oh, hallelujah. Mm. You want some, I, I want some newness. I want some peace. I want some love. I want some joy. You know, talking about some promises of God. He said, make every effort to respond to God's promises. It says supplement or add to your faith uh, uh, with the generous provision of moral excellence. We spent the last three weeks dealing with moral excellence and adding that to your faith. What is faith? Faith is word of God, knowledge used and applied in my life. If you don't have any, any, any word, you don't have any faith. So you, you got to start out with word and, 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 then, and then get faith. And then you got to add to that moral excellence where your standard is here. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. Hallelujah. I'm not going to go the easy way. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, uh, make people believe something that, that, that's, that's not true. It'd be, you know, you know how folks go, well, I didn't lie. Well, you let them believe it. You let them believe it. You let them, you knew what they was thinking. You, and you let them believe the lie. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so it, our, our standard has to be higher. That's how we set apart in this world. When people see your standard, when you're, when you're willing to risk your job to tell your boss, no, I'm not, I'm not lying on that for you. I'm not going to make an extra zero on there to make your books look more than they are just to keep my job. God will honor you for that. Oh, hallelujah. I never forget uh, a friend of mine, a pastor of mine, his boss told his daughter, I need you to take this you know, client is one of our best clients. I need you to take him to the strip club. That's what he liked. And, you know, she said, I ain't doing that. They fired her. Fired her. Next thing you know, you know, they called her back up. Hallelujah. With a big bonus. Hallelujah. And, and she didn't have to do that. Yeah, because they knew a lawsuit was about to come. Hallelujah. You better believe if you stand for what is right, God's got your back. And so it says, supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge. It, it, you know, it, it, it's not so much that I have a standard. It's more that I need to know what the standard is. Hallelujah. I need to keep, I need to keep read my Bible. I need to keep understanding. Hallelujah. What the standard is. Knowledge, as they said, in, in, uh, you know, in the world, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. That's what they say in the world. Hallelujah. We're going to go to this next one here. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and so we're going to be adding knowledge to our moral, moral excellence. Amen. Amen. When you understand that that's power. The more you know, you know, they used to have, they have all those little Saturday morning things, you know, the more you know, you know, knowledge is power, all those things. But understand that it's when you're talking about knowledge about the word of God, it's true. It's true. The more knowledge you have about what the word says, the more power you have in this world. You remember when, 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 when the devil tried to attack Jesus, what did he attack him with word? He tried to confuse him with word, but Jesus was like, oh, no, 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 no. As it is written, I'm going to hit you with some word. I'm going to hit you with what I know. Because he didn't know he was dealing with the living, breathing word of God. The word of God says in Colossians 2 and 2 and 2, the word of God says, I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. That, that, that sounds familiar, right? That's got to be first. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. Christ is the mysterious plan of God. Christ is the plan, hallelujah, of God. Christ is the plan of, uh, of salvation. The Bible says in, in, in verse three, in him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. As the word of God says, Jesus says, uh, uh, you know, no one can get to the Father but by him. I mean, we've got to understand that Jesus is our connection to God. When we accept him as our Lord and Savior and he forgives us of 
our sins, then we are instantly connected back to God. It is God who I, I you know, it's God who I need in my life. Jesus is my access to God. Jesus is the plan of salvation. He's my access, he's my example, and he's my word. In the beginning was the word, and the word, and the word, and the word became flesh. The word became flesh, walked among us. Amen. So Jesus is, hallelujah, word in flesh. Jesus is what, what you know, the word of God. I'm not separating him from God, but I'm letting you know you need him to get to God. Oh, hallelujah. He is the plan. Jesus Christ is the plan of, of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so we've got to understand that we need knowledge. Knowledge comes from the word. In order to have knowledge, uh, uh, you know, you see that word K-N-O-W, in, in order to know You've got to have word. And not only that, you have to have understanding. In Proverbs 2 and 6, it says, For the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Remember, from his mouth comes word. Remember, Jesus is word. Anytime I get word, I get Jesus. You hear all these people talking about, I want the red. Where is the red in the Bible? Because that's what Jesus said. Well, understand something. Any part of the word is inspired by the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. All of it is, is God and all of it is Jesus. <laughs> Everything God wants you to know, however it was inspired, came from God, came from his word, and came from Jesus. People try to trick you and separate you and separate you from the word. The Bible is the word of God. And Jesus is the word. The Bible says that in 2 Peter 1 and 8, it says, the, remember when we were looking at that, I wanted you to see the more you grow like this, adding these things to your life, adding, you know, adding, adding, we talk about adding moral excellence. And now we talk about adding knowledge and we'll continue to add and add. The, the Bible says the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to grow Hallelujah, in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he, God's plan, uh, uh, let me just hit this one. Remember, God said, you know, I'm going to do a new thing. My plan was, was, was to send, you know, send a part of himself down here to show us what it would be like for a man to live his life, man and woman, I ain't just, you know, but, but for a human, let's put it that way, to live his life on this earth filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, that's what Jesus did. Uh, that was the whole reason for him living 33 years. That was the whole reason for, because he, in those 33 years, he showed us how, how, how to keep our, you know, keep, keep ourselves under control. He showed us how to love. He showed us how to show compassion for one another. He showed us how to, how to, how to follow the will of God. He showed us, you know, how to, how to, how to love God with all his heart, mind, and soul, and strength. He showed us how to love his neighbor as himself. He didn't just tell us. He showed us. That was the plan of God for him to come down and show us so we would have an example. So you you wouldn't walk around with, and can't nobody do that. You still got people talking about, well, he was God, and, and can't nobody do that but him, and, and ain't nobody perfect. He came to, sh to show you that it ain't you, it's the Holy Ghost in you. You still talking about, well, you know, ain't nobody perfect, and can't nobody get. That's because you want to mess up. That's because you don't want to get it right. It says you want an excuse to live the way you want to live. But, but God is saying, I don't want that. I want people to follow my son. He was the plan of salvation. Woo! There's, there, you know, so we got to understand something. You know, you can come to church and get knowledge. But it's another thing to, to take that knowledge and, 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 and make it useful in your life. He said, it said it says, there's, there's having knowledge and then there's being productive and useful. Productive and useful for a Christian is being an example for other Christians. The uh, productive and useful is look, I look, 
I can't tell you how God saved me. I can't, I can't tell you how God delivered me. I can't tell you how he set me free. I, I can't tell you why I don't do what I used to do. But all I know is one day, one day I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. One day I was serious about this thing. Hallelujah. Because y'all know some of them days you get saved and, and you ain't really serious. You know, you, you, y'all know, come on, y'all just, it was just me. It was just me. Took a couple times. I, oh, okay. I, Somebody shake their head. I'm feeling hallelujah. But the thing is, is that it came to a point where I began to be productive and useful in my life for Jesus. You got to ask yourself, go home, look in the mirror and say, am I productive and useful for God? Because you're the only one can answer the question. I mean, you know, does God think I'm productive and useful? Because that's him. That's important. And, and because, you know, and you got to know what were you called to do? I'm called to be a witness. That's what we was called to do. We weren't necessarily, we wasn't called, hallelujah, to come. We were told uh, to fail not to assemble ourselves, but it was important that we get what we need to get here so we can go out there to be productive and useful. Your productivity and your usefulness is not your singing in the choir. It's, it's what you do out there. It's the light that people see in your life out there. It's it, when they when, when they want to know what must I be. I look. I, they go tell me what you did. What must I be? What must I do to be saved? Mm, fear the Lord. Proverbs nine and ten. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom, knowledge uh, uh, of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Fear of the Lord. That fear is reverence. It's not I'm afraid of God, but I'm, I, I, look, I know he created the world. I know he can heal me. I know he can deliver me. I don't want to put myself in a position where I, I, I can't get what I need from him because of how I'm living. I have to reverence this relationship. Oh, hallelujah. I have to believe him. I have to believe that, that, that the Bible says he is not a man, that he should lie. If he said it in the Bible, if he, if he said it, you can have it. If he said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I know I'm afflicted, but I'm standing on the deliverance. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to know the word. It's knowledge of the word so you can repeat it back to God and say, God, you said, you said, I didn't make you put this in the Bible. You put it in there for me to know. And I know it. You said. That's how you live this life. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you, when you, when, when, when. That, that good, like I said, any, anything that's good judgment according to the word of God is going to lead you to obedience. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's look at this one. So we want to start talking. I, I, so I, I, as I said, we, we're here on Palm Sunday. This is about Jesus, his triumphant entry. Hallelujah. This is, this is, this is Jesus coming, getting ready to come hallelujah, into Jerusalem. Uh, and, and, and as we saw, all of these things were, 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 were happening. It, 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 it's, going, it's, it's going toward the end, right? It's going toward the, a, a week later, he is crucified. So in, on this Palm Sunday, there, there, you know, there, there are going to be these praises, but we're going to lead up to that. Look, let's look at Luke 19 and 28. The word of God says, after telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. Bible says, as they came to the towns of, uh, of, of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead of him. Oh, I love this. I love this, 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 this story. I love this part of this historical event, not a story. Uh, uh, go, he said, go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. That's like, that's like me saying, go over in the Mother Haynes driveway 
and get her a brand new car that no one has ever driven. They just delivered it to her and then bring it to me. Still got the keys in it and bring it to me. And they said, if anyone asks why you are untying that coat, just say, the Lord needs it. Just say, the Lord needs it. You got to understand something. That's, you know, the person that Jesus is talking about has to be somebody that has knowledge of the Lord. He has to be, he or she has to be uh, uh, someone that, that, that has so much information about, about God, about, about Jesus, uh, uh, about, you know, maybe even personally, you know, it might be one of the ones that, 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 that healed him. Might have been one that, that, that he healed, I'm sorry, that, that he delivered, that he set free. Might, might have been blind, blind Bartimaeus's coat, you know, that, you know, that he, he had a coat he couldn't ride because he couldn't see. You know, you don't know why, who it was, but it was somebody that had, had some personal knowledge. That, that, that all, that all, yeah, that f- knowledge that lead, that led to the, the faith, word of God, knowledge you use and apply it in my life, but that led to, that the only thing that they had to say, oh, hallelujah, the Lord needed it. Jesus asked for it. Hallelujah. Bible says, and they went for, they went and found the coat just as Jesus said, and then, and sure enough, as they were untying it, the owner asked, uh, why are you untying the coat? Uh, that ain't yours. What you doing? You know, in today's day, you probably would hear a ch-ch. <laughs> and the Bible says, and the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. And then the word of God says, (laughs) hallelujah. Uh, uh, uh. So they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on it. Wasn't even, there was no more conversation. There was no more, you know, well, what he needed for? It was simply, the Lord needs it. That's a connection that, you know, that's, that we all want to have to be so in tune, hallelujah, with, 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 with the spirit of the Lord, that we know what he needs of ours and we give it without, without, without one thought. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we got to think about how some of us might respond. I don't know. The Lord going to have to talk to me. The Lord ain't said nothing to me. You know, I mean, you know what the funny thing is, is that even if somebody lied, right? Even if somebody lied, God would know your heart as to why you responded. I gave it to them because they said the Lord needed it. I don't know if they're lying. I don't know if they're telling the truth, but I'm giving it because the, they said the Lord needs it and the Lord's going to honor me based upon my response to him, not my response to them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What's it? Luke, Luke 19 and 36, the word of God says, as he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. Here's Jesus. He's coming in. He's, he's coming to Jerusalem. He's coming to all these places time after time at, at time again for these last three years. And he's never got a response like this before. He's never got a response like this. He's come in, you know, I mean, they don't even say, you know, when he did the Sermon on the Mount that on his way to the mountain, you know, they, they, they didn't Never got a response like this. And the Bible says when they reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all of the wonderful miracles they had seen. So 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 this how it starts. It starts with the people that know him. 
It, it, it starts with the people that followed him. The people that know him, the people that followed him, the people that seen the miracles, the, the people that seen the, 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 the leopards healed and the eyes uh, opened and, 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 and all of the wonderful things that Jesus had done, the, 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 you know, feeding the 5,000 and feeding 3,000 more and, and, and just, all, you know, uh, raising Lazarus from the dead. All of the things that they've seen, they have something to praise God for. Oh, Hallelujah. And I send blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in, in, in the highest of heaven. It's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's even like today, you know, when, 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 the, when, the, when the praise team was up here and they were praising and, and, and they were singing, hallelujah, they're, 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 you know, some of you, you know, you got into the praise. They didn't have to get up here and, and they didn't have to go, come on, praise him, praise him. Come on, y'all, get up. Come on, sit down. Come on, clap your hand. You got in the praise. You, 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 you praised him because you knew why you were praising him. You, 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 you praised him because you know what he can do. You praised him because you know what he has done for you. You know, you praised him because you know what you want him to do. There, 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 follows Followers of Jesus know how and why we praise the Lord. We don't need no prompting. If you need prompting, then, then you, don't, you don't know why everybody else is praising. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go on to this next. And, and uh, it says, the, 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 but then it says, the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. I understand something. At the end of the day, everybody was praising him. The entire city began to praise him as they came in. But he entered with the followers. He entered with the people that knew why they were praising, that knew what he was doing. But now you got people like, well, who, who, who is this? Who is this? But they were like, hey, we, they just, they, and they got in the praise. They got in the praise. Hey, they, oh, Hosanna. They, they're like, well, who is it? Is it the king? Is it, is it is our deliverer? They just, hey, praise the Lord. It's kind of like all them people that went down there. Remember when, 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 when the Cavs won and, and all them people was downtown? There were some people downtown who followed the Cavs. And there were some people downtown who just was down there for the celebration. And so as they, as, as the people was going by, you know, you, you, you had people go, well, well, who is that? That's LeBron. Who is that? That's, who got, that's JR. The, the thing is, is that they was down there in the celebration, but didn't know why they was celebrating. That's why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. There are people who praise because other people are praising because they just conform to the crowd. That's why, that's why, that's why some of the same folks who was praising him and, and was calling him king, you know, one week and the next week they was going crucify him. Because they guess they would they, look, they got with that crowd, now they just getting with this crowd. That's why you gotta teach you, you gotta teach your kids. You got, you know, I mean, your kids, your grandkids, don't conform to the world. Don't be a follower, hallelujah, of people this way. If you want to follow somebody, follow Jesus. He's never gonna leave you wrong. He's never gonna take you down the wrong path or, or, or lead you in the wrong way. Oh, thank you, Jesus. People with a renewed mind, we know why we praised. We know who we used to be. Hallelujah. Uh, we know that we used to have, I'm, I'm doing this to myself. We know that we used to have cancer and we don't have it anymore. And, and, and you know, it ain't got to be cancer. You know when the last time you were sick. You know when the last time you couldn't get out of bed. You know when the last time you was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. And now, oh, hallelujah. I didn't have nothing, I didn't have nothing to stand on but his word. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bible says, the Bible says in, in, in Luke 19 to 31, but some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, teacher, 
rebuke your followers for saying things like that. Saying things like what? Saying that he healed me? Oh, Hosanna. He delivered me? Hosanna. Hallelujah. He performed miracles? Hosanna. He changed my life? Hosanna. I ain't, why, why, I ain't, why I'm going to stop them? And, 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 and you can't stop me because what I'm saying is the truth. See, I can stop somebody from praising uh, about something they don't know about. About something they ain't gone through. But hallelujah, you can't, you can't stop it. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, if they kept quiet, hallelujah. He said the stones along the road would burst into cheers. Jesus said, this thing, this thing got to happen. <laughs> they they going to have to praise me right now because the word says they got to praise me. The word says that, that, that at this time, hallelujah, this praise has to come forth. See, that's why sometimes you can't stop your praise. That's why sometimes, hallelujah, you, you, you can be driving in your car and you say, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because you remember what God has done for you. You remember how you, you, you can be at home. You can, you can be at your job. You're all, oh, thank you, Jesus. And they look like, well, you all right? You all right? Oh, no, I just remembered something. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I remembered. Hallelujah. I just, just, just want to know, unexpected praises. Did you just come up on you? Holiday. You, don't, you don't have to wait for the do 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 and if somehow the Pharisees would have been able to close the mouths of the people, Jesus said that the rocks would cry out. Because praise for Jesus was going to come out that day. Bible says in Zechariah 9 and 9, it says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph. O oh, people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. Already foretold. It was, it was, once they saw the donkey, they was like, oh, this it, this it, this it. This is what's happening. Woo! So the thing is that, when those responsible for knowing the word and sharing it with the people, when, when you're put in that position, priest, pastor, bishop, whatever it might be, when you're put in the position where your job is to make sure that, that, that people know the word, when they don't know it, it's your fault. Oh, thank you, Jesus. When they don't know it, it's your fault. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next scripture. Word of God says, and I will give you shepherds, pastors, priests, bishops, anyone who's leading, missionary. I mean, look, after my own heart, those who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. Guide you. God guide you with. My job is to guide you with knowledge and understanding. But my job is not to be so responsible for the knowledge you have. You, you are to get in your word yourself. But, 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 but my job is to, is to guide you with knowledge and understanding. About what? Word of God. If I try to guide you uh, about Polit politics, it ain't my job. It's not my job. You know, my, my job is to guide you with knowledge and understanding about the word of God. That's the only reason I'm here. It's the only reason I'm here. 
I can't, I can't guide you with, with knowledge and understanding about anything that is not in the word of God. People ask me about politics. I say, well, oh, my only guide is Jesus. And what did Jesus say? Give Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give God what belongs to God. That's all he said. In the most corrupt and, 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 and brutal uh, society in history, all he said was give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give God what belongs to God. Why? Because if you give God what belongs to God, he'll, he'll help you deal with whatever Caesar got. Oh, hallelujah. I don't, I don't care. I, 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 I've been cool no matter who's been in office. I've been blessed coming in and blessed going out because of my relationship with God, not because of who's in office. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But in Hosea, the Bible says, my people are being destroyed. In King James, it says, for the lack of knowledge. In the New Living, it says, because they don't know me. A lot of people come to church and they know of God, but they don't know God. God says, you want to know me? You need a personal relationship with me. Do you pray? Do you read your Bible? How you, do you obey your word? That's how you get to know him. Because the more you obey, the more you see what happens uh, uh, you know, from your, that obedience. And then the more you want to obey more. I don't know about y'all. I'd be like, you know, it's been, it's been times when I will obey the Bible, Mother, Mother Tyree, and, and, and God has blessed me. I'd be like, well, what's in here? I can, what else in here? I can, <laughs> let me see what else in here I can, uh, I can apply to my life. I went to the gas station. I mean, not gas. It was a car wash. And God said, bless this. Bless the guy drying. You know, you get people just to start wiping your car. He said, bless the guy wiping your car. And I don't usually carry money. And then I, I looked at my wallet. All I had was a 50. And it was somebody gave me that. And I, I don't usually carry. I ain't bragging. I don't usually have a, nothing. And I'm like, well, Lord, I, I, you ain't telling me to do, give them that, are you? <laughs> I want to ask them, do you got some change? You got some change right there. No, I got, I got no change. I gave it to a mother. I gave it to a mother. I gave it to him. Somebody had just blessed me with it. I can kid you not. Somebody had just blessed me with it. I put it in my wallet. I forgot about it because I don't usually carry cash. I look in that. Here, here, man, this must be, this must be for you. He ain't say thank you. He didn't look like. He didn't look like, oh, wow, this is something more than I ever get. He just walk, kept on walking. But see, I, 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 I wasn't going to get my blessing from him. I wasn't going to get my blessing from him. No way. And, and, and God has blessed me. You know, he, he's, just, he's blessed me more. I, I ain't thought, you know, I'm telling y'all now, but I don't go home thinking about, oh, man, I get that mad at 50. No, I, See, what I'm thinking, I'm, but I'm just saying that sometimes you get with me like, Lord, is this you? <laughs> but the thing is, is that, look, I know God. I know that, that I can't beat him giving. I can't beat him giving. Bible says uh, my people are being destroyed because they don't know me. You won't, you, won't, you won't do what the word says because you don't know God. He says, since you priests, pastors, uh, uh, bishops, or whatever, refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priest. Y'all got to understand something. There's some people out there preaching the word that God said, I, I don't know them. It says, since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. This is a high calling. Let's look at the next group. Word of God says here in Luke 19 and 41. Now we're back to, we're back to the entry of Jesus. He's just gone through all of these people praising him and, and, and lifting them up and listening to these priests talking about, you better tell them to shut up 
And Jesus is like, look, they got to do this because the rocks is going to cry out. So now as Jesus has gone through this, the word of God says, but as they came closer to Jerusalem and Jesus saw the city ahead, he began to weep. And I don't know about y'all, you know, and, 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 and I, I read the Bible, you know, I, I consider myself to, to say I, I know a lot about the word, but I couldn't, I couldn't remember this. The only time I remember Jesus weeping was when Lazarus, and the Bible says Jesus wept. And so now here, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm reading this and I'm going, wow. He said, he said, how I wish today, now he's He's weeping. He's crying as he's saying this. He said, oh, how I wish today that, that you of all people would understand the way to peace. Now he's talking about Jerusalem and he's just gone through them and he's listened to the praise, but he knows his empty praise. Because he's weeping. I wish you would have known the way to peace. I wish you would understand that, that, that I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. That nobody's getting to the Father but by me. I wish you had understood that. He said, but now it's too late. And the peace is hidden from your eyes. Your praise is empty. Your praise is hollow. You don't recognize who I am or who I should be in your life. And because of that, peace is going to be hidden. It says before long, your enemies will bring ramparts against your walls. You know, those things, those ramps that get take you up and take you over the walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. It says they will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will, will not leave a single stone in place because you did not accept the opportunity for salvation. I want you to think about he's talking about his people. He's talking about the Israelites. He's talking about, you know, he's headed into Jerusalem, which is over in Israel over in the Middle East, and, and peace. They have never had peace there to this day. Because they, because they still don't believe in Jesus. And the word of God already said it, it will, it will never leave there. Even when they left, it followed them. No matter where they go, anti-Semitic, anti, but where they go, people are trying to war against them because it's written in the word. And, 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 and Jesus wept about this. That's why the Bible tells us to pray for them. The Bible tells us to pray for them. You know, I, I saw a group, you know, they were wearing, you know, that black and white and the hat and they were walking down Mayfield Road it was a whole group. It was a class because they was coming from that school on Warrensville. And I was at the bank. I saw them and said, man, God bless you guys. You know, they was braced for, you know, because I'm walking up. They was braced for something bad to happen. And I was like, God bless y'all. And they was like, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I know they still God's people. But they still got to come to the Lord. They still got to come. Come, come. They got to come through Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, and so we've got to, we, we, we've got to understand that we have something special. That when we praise, our praise has to be real. Hallelujah. When we praise, our, our praise has to be based on the knowledge that we have of God. The Bible says we're supposed to provoke Israel to jealousy. The only reason why we would be able to is because of the way we live, the, way, the light that shines off of us, the love that comes out of us, the way we deal with situations. Hallelujah. Every minute of our lives, 
It's not good. Just because you're a Christian, it's not going to be great. It's not going to be something you feel like praising God about. But the difference between the world and us is no matter what's going on, we still got something to praise God about. We still, we, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord, y'all know that, y'all know that. But if you read the entire passage, they're talking about the joy of the knowledge of the Lord is their strength. What I know about God, hallelujah, makes me be able to be strong in whatever this world can throw at me. I have joy no matter what. Why? Because I know who God is. It's not talking about God's joy. It's talking about your knowledge of God brings you joy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Ah, yeah, I... I I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Come on, let's come on. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have been listening to Words to Grow with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. We pray that this word takes root in your life.